the expander, so we just expanded the subject which got a lot of publicity, but just to be on the safe side, let's, let me define expander graphs. Uh, first with the four graph, and then we'll see what's the connection to this subject. Uh, Expand the graph. So let X be now X is a graph. So graph for us, so, so it's a IE a C. It's a complex of dimension one. And uh, X is called N epsilon expander uh, again uh, epsilon now is some number positive number if for every subset y of x zero the vertices of x so I'm, I'm, I'm continue to use the language of simplicial complex um, the the number of edges between y to y bar, so this is edges from y to y bar. The number of edges is at least epsilon times the minimum between the size of y and y bar. You can define it. You can, uh, you can express this in uh, other ways. Sometimes people uh, say, OK, uh, for every y which is not more than half of the points of x, its boundary is at least epsilon size of it. But uh, let's write it this way. For every subset y, the number of edges which go from y to the other side is at least epsilon, at least some constant time the size of the set. Or the complement, of course, the set is very small, you cannot expect much going out of it. So, um, and the, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, this works well even for the empty set, right? Okay, I don't have to write why not the empty set. Okay, so now, uh, so, so, uh, uh, as I said before, in, in, uh, in, in this overlapping and in these expanders, you know, if the graph is connected, then every 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 connected graph is an expander, is an epsilon expander for some epsilon. Because you know, you can you can take all subsets and you can take the minimum epsilon, which will give you give it to you. But what we really care is to have an infinite family of graphs, which are epsilon expanders with the same epsilon. Right? That's this is the name of the game, right? To get the same. Now, usually we talk about a graph is expander, but really, you really have to think about that, that I have a family of infinitely many graphs, which are epsilon expander with, with, with the same epsilon. Okay, let's agree on that. So that I will not have to repeat it a million times. So what we really care is that the size is going to infinity. Um, so let's say, so if, if x is an epsilon expander, I, I want to claim that it has the the, even the topological overlapping property. Why? What we have to do? We have to take f. So f will be an arbitrary map to r to the dimension, but the dimension here is 1. I'm taking a map from x naught from the vertices, from the vertices to, to the real line. Now choose a point. Z in R such that half of f of x naught are below Z 
and half are above. Okay. So I'm I'm taking so so I have many points like that. Then I will pick up here the point Z. Half of them are below, half of them are high. And now I extend the map F, we extend it to the MF bar from the graph to R. Right? Namely, I'm sending the edges to the line. Right? Now, all, so, so if we will call this set Y and this set Y bar, so the size of y is approximately x0 over 2. Well, it's really equal unless it's a, if it's an odd, not exactly half, okay? Don't go over that. Okay? And, then, and, and now what, what the expansion property tells me? The expansion property tells me that there are many edges there are many edges which are going from y to y bar. It's this epsilon fraction of the size of y and y bar. There are many edges going from y to y bar. And this, this means and all these edges are going to, to, to pass through Z when I, when, I, when I connect, right? When I, when I define F bar, then all these edges which are going from Y to Y bar are going to pass through, through Z. So Z is going to be covered by many of the edges of the graph. I'm not precise, I'm not worried now about the, about the what was the connection with the, with the overlapping constant and this epsilon, etc. Okay. I just want to, sh to show you that if you, are, if you have an expander, then somehow this is expander implies such an overlapping property. That's, that's the, this overlapping property for graphs is, is, is a kind of an, ex an expansion property. If you think about it for a second, you see that this is actually not quite equivalent to expanders because um, the overlapping property is, is much weaker than expanders. Not much, but it's weaker than expanders. For example, if, if, if a graph is epsilon expander, then it must be connected. Why? Because if it's not connected, then take one of the connected components, the, then there is no edge between that connected component to the other connected component. So this side is zero, while this side is not zero. So if a graph is expanded, it's much be connected. In some sense, expanded is a graph which is very, very much connected. But for this overlapping <coughs> property, I can take, uh, assume you have an expander, and, and you take a new graph, which is the same expander plus one vertex, which is not connected to any of the other. It still has the overlapping property. Because somehow, this overlapping property does not care about very small sets. It really gives you a good expansion between sets which are large. Like if you take half of the point, then indeed, if you take many points, then indeed you need that it will be, that the boundary will be large. You can think about that, it's kind of, it will uh, it, it, it's give you a, a good expansion to subsets whose size is linear in the amount of vertices, something like that. Again, when you, when you think about the family going to infinity. But let's not worry about it now, I'll just say that this is slightly weaker than expanded. But you see, kind of a beginning of a connection between this and and expand and uh, and expand and somehow this led Gromov to 
talk about a generalization of the concept of expander to higher dimensional simplicial complex. So this I just showed you, you know, the dimension one case of the story. Now this dimension one case of the story is, is uh, uh, takes us to expander, and that's kind of the easy part. And you see that, uh, 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 oh, 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 sorry. I had to say, I mean, I kind of assumed that everyone knows, I don't know how many people uh, heard about expanders before and know something about that. Who doesn't, who, who, who doesn't know anything about expander? Oh, I say, okay, so I, I really have to, to do everything from here. Expander is a topic which got a lot of attention. So I, I will, uh, okay, I, I'll make sure in the first classes to, to, to give a little bit about expanders in classical theory. Expander graphs are graphs which are very, very connected. You can see that somehow they said that, um, you see, what is really an expander? So let's go back for a second. Uh, or let's, let's show you something which is not an expander. If you have a graph like that, so that you have know, your point and your connection with them and your points here, but somehow very little connection between this side to this side, this is not an expander. Expander is something that should be kind of fat and round. And uh, if you take two, uh, uh, um, if, you, if you want to divide your, your graph into two pieces, you have to pay a big price for that. You have to cut many edges. Well, you can always cut around one vertex and make, and make this vertex uh, in, uh, not connected to the other. But then you disconnect only one vertex. But if you want to disconnect many vertices from the others, then you will have to pay a large price for that. And you, you can imagine why this is such an important uh, property in, for example, communication networks. In communication networks, you know, you want to connect. You have very small uh, uh, microprocessors who want to talk to each other. And then somehow you want them, many of them will be connected to each other. So of course, the best expander and the, and the best will be the complete graph. Connect every vertex with every vertex. The problem with this is that if you have like, uh, uh, you know, like in, 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 in the future computers are talking about, I don't know, like 10,000 microprocessors sitting with, within one computer. And if, if all of them should talk with all of them, then we are getting uh, ten, more or less 10,000 square over two, right? Which is, uh, how much is it? 50 million, right? Which is kind of unfeasible to put edges, to put connection between all of them. So, so what people wanted, and that was a starting point of expander theory, they wanted to find such graphs that I allow you, say, to, to connect every, every, every uh, micro, microprocessors with only 30 other neighbors, 30 other microprocessors. And still I want that the graph will be very, very, very much connected like the complete graph. So of course it's not like the complete graph, but, but somehow what came up is the definition of expander. So this definition really ca came up from the computer science uh, community. Was it, uh, and there's, there's a, there's a really uh, great history to this subject. It started like 40 years ago with uh, some work of Pinsker. Now somebody found that in fact it already appeared in uh, some earlier work. Uh, or some other, what? Of Kolmogorov and Brezhnev. Yeah, collected, right, right, yes, collected. Yeah. How many connections can exist in their brain? What? How many connections can exist in their brain? Right, so how the neurons in the brain are connected, in fact. They already started that. The strange thing about it, which I, I was not able to figure out, that uh, Pinsker, which everyone attributes the definition to him, and uh, this Brezhnev and Kolmogorov were more or less the same kind of uh, circle in Moscow at the same time. And, uh, you know, they knew later on that Pinsker is always got it, and they never claimed that they did before. Because I asked Morgulis, Morgulis told me that the way we think about expander is probably the way Pinsker thought about it. But for them it was different, though the definition of mathematics is really equivalent, and, and what everyone attributes to Pinsker is that random graphs are expander, in fact, already appear in the work of Kolmogorov. Uh, anyway, we are not historians, so we will not now uh, bother with this question. This was kind of a starting point, uh, and uh, the first construction, like 
Pinsky was, at least, usually it attributed to Pinsky, uh, who proved that random k regular graphs are expanders, and then uh, Margulis used Kajdan property T for the presentation theory of semi simple league groups to prove uh, to have explicit construction of expander, because in computer science, you really you want explicit construction, not just random uh, construction. And then Ramanujan conjecture was, was used to get uh, uh, kind of an optimal expander, and uh, there is a, 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 a and then there is a zigzag construction. There is a long history of uh, of expander, and they they uh, became kind of a basic, really fundamental basic tool in computer science. These expander graphs, and um, suddenly. The work of uh, of uh, Gromov called the attention to higher dimensional expander. What will be the theory of higher dimension? So our course will dedicate to the higher dimensional theory, but I will here and there, especially that I see that there is an epsilon fraction uh, of the of the students who never heard about expander. That I will always start somehow with giving you some background on one dimensional expander. And then we'll go to the higher dimensional. Uh, but uh, let me start for a minute a completely new story, because the completely a, a, a new story also takes us to higher dimensional expander, and that came from a completely different source. So forget for a minute about the work of uh, uh, of Gromov. And let's talk about something completely different, and this is uh, uh, kind of an Israeli product which related to the subject, and this is the uh, lineal Meshulam. Uh, model of random complexes. So this is uh, not the linear from here for the computer science department and uh, uh, Roy Meshulam from the Technion and they wrote uh, kind of a paper which became quite influential paper uh, suggesting a model for random Simplicial complexes. They started with they 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 really talked only about two-dimensional complexes, and then Rohim Shulam and a student of him, uh, Wolach, uh, generalized much of him uh, into the d-dimensional. They they really wanted to so let me recall the Erdosh Rene Rene model of random graphs. The one dimensional theory. That's a famous work of uh, Edo Shopredi from, I don't know, 40s, 50s, something like that, I don't remember. And they study the notion of random graph. Now, what does it mean? You take, you take n points, and for every two points, I and J, you decide whether the edge between I and J is inside or outside the, the graph. You flip a coin. You flip a coin with probability P. And you decide, do we take it or we don't take it? And, uh, and with that X and P, P, the random graph on n vertices with every edge appear appears with probability p. Okay, so now when I say d random graph, you know that this is kind of a language to speak. But of course, there's no such a graph. It's not one graph. It's it's kind of a, it's a probability distribution, right? I mean, I 
it's give probability what will happen and then you can ask questions like what is the what, what how such graph look like is such graph is connected and of course some of them are connected and some of them are not connected if you take a random graph with this probability but for example one of the famous theorems says that if p is less than uh, log n divided by n minus epsilon, then x and p is almost surely not connected. Not connected, it's not a connected graph. And what does it mean almost surely? I don't want to write it down today, it's just a uh, class of stories, which I don't know how much we'll go into this subject in depth, but it really says that in most cases, if, if the probability uh, which you take is log n over n, where n is going to infinity, and it's less than log n over n, then the outcome graph is not going to be a connected graph. On the other hand, if this, uh, 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 if p is more than log n over n plus epsilon for any epsilon, fix epsilon bigger than zero, as small as it be, then almost truly connected. So linear Meshulam wanted, so this is one of, this was a starting point of a lot of work. There's so much work on random, a random graph, you know, got to go to Wikipedia and you'll get a million of uh, references and subjects and what's the chromatic number of a random graph, what is the date, what is this, what's the properties, etc., etc. Many, what, what, what's the typical, kind of what will typically, if you do random, such random graph, what it will be. Depending on the probability, whether of the probability related to n, etc., etc. Linear Meshulam wanted to start to build a theory of random complexes. So here, there is even a question: What you mean by that? There are various different models of random complexes that, that you can imagine, and they pick one. They decided on, on to go for one, and the one which they decided to take is that you take, uh, you take, take endpoints, take all pairs, i.e. all edges. So if you want, you take the complete graph on endpoints. This is your basic skeleton of the com of the two-dimensional uh, uh, complex. In fact, in the professional language, we call one skeleton is exactly, or one skeleton of a simplician complex are the points and the edges, okay, without the triangle. So they said we take the complete, one, uh, the complete graph. And now, just like Erdos and Reni decided for every edge, whether it is inside or outside, with probability p, okay, and independently, I forgot to say, they decide independently for every edge, they take as a random model for their sim simplices, they talk about, uh, I don't know, let's denote it, h2np will be, uh, you take the the uh, 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 complete graph on n vertices, on n vertices, where each triangle is taken independently with probability p. So on each triangle, you decide, is it, is it inside or not? Do I take the triangles or not? But the edges, I take all. 
Okay, that's important. In fact, it's important, and that's something which I don't like, but that's important. Because it gives you always a, a simplicial complex so that the degree of every vertex is the complete one, like it's, it's n. And one of the things that we, we, we really want is maybe bounded degree, and that doesn't cover. But that's, a, but that's a nice model by itself. I mean, for, for whatever it's good for, it's good. And then they ask questions like Erdos-Reni Erdos type of question. For example, when it is connected. Okay, now what does it mean connected? If you just think of it connected in the topological sense, it's always connected because this is a complete graph. And here we are coming to the language of homology and cohomology. How many people here know? How many people here don't know at all what is homology or cohomology? Everyone knows? Okay, so if you take a homology of, to be more precise, reduced homology, which maybe you don't remember what it is, I'll, I'll, I'll define this very quickly for this course. I'm glad you know, but we'll still define it. Then, to say that the graph is connected is basically to say that it's, it's zero homology group is zero. I know that maybe you learn that this is say that this zero homology group is one, it's one dimensional, but that's a slightly different definition. There's something called reduced homology, non reduced. Anyway, the natural thing in this context, the natural analog of connectedness, is the question what the probability when the, the first homology group of such complex with coefficients in F2 is zero or not? Is zero or not? That's the analog whether, like, like the question of Erdos and Reni, whether the graph is connected or not. And they prove a beautiful theorem which has a very similar flavor to this one. They prove that if P, the probability that you take a triangle is less than 2 log n over n, then almost surely H1 is non-zero. And if P is more than 2 log n over n plus epsilon, then almost surely H1 is zero. The graph is correct. <coughs> Moreover, a Meshulam and Volach in a work, this is I think a paper from 2006 and Meshulam and Volach maybe 2009, they prove, they, they study a model like that for a d-dimensional random complex. Now, okay, now what is the model for, for a random d-dimensional simplicial complex? A random d-dimensional simplicial complex is they first of all they take the complete d minus one dimensional complex, namely they take all vertices, all edges, and all triangles. And then they decide on every pyramid, on every subset of size 4, they decide independently with probability p, is it inside or outside? Do we take it or not? And you can imagine what's the d-dimensional model. And then they prove, and then they ask, what, uh, is it, this is too fast, if you want, it's too fast. And then they ask, what's the, what's, uh, what happened? Is H d minus 1 is, is the, the d minus 1 dimensional homology group is 0 or not. If it's 0, this is like connectedness. If it's not 0, this is like non-connectedness. And they put it in dimension d, what will appear is, is d. And then instead of H, uh, uh, sorry, this is not, uh, yeah, instead of H1, it would be HD minus 1. And here also HD minus 1. So it's kind of a beautiful, beautiful theorem which puts Erdos-Reni theorem as a special case 
for graphs of a much more general theorem which holds for simplicial complexes in every, in every dimension. It will be, a, I think, it probably will be the same if you will do it with finite field, if you will do it with R, then maybe it might be a different, then I'm not completely sure about the story. But in graphs, it's with any field. Yeah, in, in, in graphs, it's, it's equivalent. Like, in other fields, it's, it's, it's not equivalent. <coughs> in, in higher, yeah, that's one of the, of, the, of the difficulties which start to be in, in higher dimension, that vanishing or non-vanishing start really to depend for graphs. If H, uh, H zero over one field is zero, then over every field it is zero because it's equivalent to the connectedness of the graph. In higher dimensional, it can be H one uh, zero over the real numbers and non zero over the finite. Okay, so. Uh, so, the, so they, they define a nice, a nice theory like that. Now, what, what happened amazingly, and that's, it, it's kind of an amazing because, I don't want, I mean, I'm sure you're tired, and if you are not tired, I'm tired, and uh, I don't want to go to be very technical here. They define along the way, they even didn't call it by this name, but they define some notion, linear and mesura, which if you check this notion for one dimensional, this is, a, 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 you get a expanders. And so in, in a way they define what does it mean for an i-dimensional simplicial complexes to be expander using the language of cohomology. And because it requires some notations, I don't want to do it now. And in fact, what they really proved, what they really proved, they proved that you have this tre uh, threshold. You see, we call this the threshold like, you know, this t log n over n. If you be below that, you are, you are on one side of the, of, of, the, of the property. On above it, you are on the other side. And then we said that this is kind of a threshold uh, probability. Below the threshold, you are not connected even. Above the, sh the threshold, not only that you are connected, you are even expanded. And in fact, if you go backward and you go to the Erdos-Renyi theory of random graph, this is also true for graphs. Below the threshold, you are not connected. Above the threshold, not only that you are connected, you are very, very much connected. You are expanded. It's kind of interesting that you have such a sharp threshold between being not connected and immediately above it to be expanded. And in some sense, they got it also for this, and, and because they, and they have a notion of expand. What is amazing that even though if I would give you the definition, it looks so technical and so non-intuitive, completely not intuitive somehow. It's very difficult to see why they came to that. You have to go a little bit into the technical term to see why they came to that definition. Almost exactly, almost, it's not completely, the same definition of expanders, also without calling it expander, came out in the work of Grom. Grom, using cohomology over F2, defined a notion which is more or less equivalent to what would it completely indep independently, and by completely different reasons, motivation than linear and shulam, define a notion of expander, if you want, also without calling it. But also generalizing, if you boil down to dimension one, you get classical expanders. So it seems to be pretty natural to take this common definition, which as I said, it's not completely <laughs> equivalent, and to call it expanders. And that's what we more or less want to call i-dimensional expanders. But the story is more complicated. The story is more complicated because, well, this is, even though it's very nice and it came from two different sources, 
This is not the only natural extension of the concept of expanders from one dimensional case to an I dimensional case. Uh, there are other suggestions. Some people suggested various different definitions. What? Let's say that we all agree on what are expanders. Well, I gave you the definition. You should agree. There is no democracy. But what was nice about this property of expanded is that, the, that it turns out that this definition of expanded is equivalent to several other definitions which came from a different sources of mathematics even. Like this definition is equivalent to a definition using spectral uh, uh, eigenvalues of the LSC matrix. If you know what is it, fine. If not, I'll explain it some. So there is a spectral definition of expander. For graphs, they are equivalent. So you can take that definition, you can extend this definition to an higher dimensional simulation complex, and then using that definition, you want to define expanders. Ah, but then there is a problem. It's not equivalent to, that, to the extensions of Gromov and Linear Meshulam. And, some, and now there is another definition of expanders, and then you can extend naturally that definition, and suddenly it's different. So there are several definitions which are, when, when you talk about graph, they're equivalent to each other. But when you go to the higher dimensional, the higher dimensional story is, is a more complicated one, and more, a little bit more involved. But that's OK. That's good. It leaves us something to do, right? Especially those of you who are, I don't know, master degree students, PhD students are looking for uh, problems to work on. That's exactly an area which is now starting to grow. And I have to admit that we don't even know yet what are the right definitions. So part of this course and part of the research which is done these days, and some of the material which I will try to describe in this course will be a description of a kind of a current research that you know, we are still, those of us who are interested in this, we are still looking for what are exactly the right directions. And one of these directions will be extending the notions of Ramanujan graphs. I mentioned that Ramanujan conjecture played an important role in the theory of graphs and the construction of them, uh, building a optimal expanders out of the so-called Buatitz building of, of, uh, of the group PGL2 over the periodic numbers. I don't know how many of, the, of, of you know at all about this subject. And then you can also take this direction and construct higher dimensional versions. Like for graphs, it's called Ramanujan graphs. For higher dimensional, a simplicial complex, we can call them Ramanujan complexes. And we can come up with a definition of a Ramanujan complex, which will extend the definition of Ramanujan graph. And then, and for, for Ramanujan graph, they are expander, they are best expander. For Ramanujan complexes, it's not even clear if they are expanders in Gromov definition, for example. That's an open problem. So, they satisfy excellent properties, some other pro excellent properties. So that will be also one of the directions that we may take in this. And last, the last thing I will mention, because I have only like two or three minutes, is that recently we also discovered, I don't know, are there students here from the computer science department? Ah, so I shouldn't mention. <laughs> Anyway, I, 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 I would mention only that uh, we discovered some connection with high dimensional expander with, with the subject, which is a very kind of a hot topic in, a, in a computer science called property testing. Property testing is kind of thing that uh, you want to check if something satisfies something, and, and it, you know, somebody is sending you a very, very long vector of bit 0, 1. And you want to check whether this is a legitimate vector, for example, for error correcting code, if you know what's that, if it's a code word. What? Andrew, you said, sorry. 
I didn't hear what you said for, uh, first. I want to check. I, you want to check whether the vector is a legitimate code word. Oh. Whether it's, if it's or, or maybe there are mistakes in it. Okay. There are some uh, fancy methods which enable you to check that, okay, the, 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 the vector is of length n, n is very large, can be under 1,000, and, uh, and I will check only 30 bits of it, random bits, and I will tell you with probability of 99% whether it is a legitimate vector or not. It turns out that this is also related to this uh, higher dimensional error correcting codes. And in a way which, uh, again, I, I will get to that. So in fact, uh, um, there are many subjects that I can take, which if I will try to teach all of them, uh, even a full year course is not enough, but uh, I, I will choose some, some of these topics along the way. We'll see according to your interests, etc. So uh, good that you wrote to me what you are doing. And you can come to talk with me and say if you want something. 